what is up everyone oj here welcome back to another video today we're going to be going over 11 big nintendo switch rpgs that you can look forward to playing after xenoblade chronicles 3 which is basically taking rpg fans by storm on the nintendo switch there's still more to come so we're going to be detailing some of those games with the release dates prices and information for you guys but before we get into that please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first now let's go ahead and first start off with temtem which is launching on september 6th for 44 dollars 99 now i did play the beta of temtem on pc and i kept on calling it pokemon instead of temtem every single time because this is a pokemon clone but what it does is that it adds a lot of the features that people felt that pokemon should have for a long time now with like different like difficulty modifiers mmo aspects to it a lot of online events and things that are happening so if you're into pokemon you might be into temtem now remember this is not a super high budget game or anything it was a kickstarter game but i think that they've done fairly well for the budget and time that they do have it's been a long time since temtem was supposed to release i know the date was always up in the air and i've just been waiting and i'm pretty sure i purchased this game for the nintendo switch because i did back it on kickstarter but i haven't really kept up with the kickstarter i just gave them whatever the amount was to get the game and that was that and i think i also have a playstation 5 code or something like that i'm not sure but either way temtem is coming out september 6th very soon here so if you are into pokemon style rpgs then temtem might be a game that you want to check out next up is the dio field chronicle on september 22nd for 59 dollars 99 now this is a very interesting game it's a real-time strategy tactics game from square enix and they've placed a lot of i would say praise on what they've done here from the graphics to the gameplay to the story to the character design they're very happy about this brand new rpg and you can check it out right now on your playstation 5 pc nintendo switch wherever you want to play it on because it's pretty much launching on everything there is a demo and i did check out the demo and i felt that it was solid now it wasn't anything too crazy from the demo but i think that the full game probably has a lot of twists and turns and new combat aspects and mechanics to it i think it's the start of something nice a little bit weird starting out first but i think that people will warm up to the game as they get through and understand the characters and see what's going on so this is a game to keep your eye out on on september 22nd or if you want to wait later down the line maybe there's some price drops you can pick it up then but remember there is a demo on all platforms now now next up is the legend of heroes trails from zero that's coming out on september 27th for 39 dollars 99 and essentially this is where it all began here when it comes down to legend of heroes and you can go back and play this classic rpg and it's pretty much remastered and brought to the modern sense with some of the controls and the gameplay and what they've done with it it's a great franchise from everything that i've heard i need to get more into the legend of heroes series because they've been building this thing up for more than a decade now it seems at this point right it was a long time ago that these games did come out and they're very highly coveted and wanted out there a lot of fans really love the legend of heroes series so if you want to see kind of where it all began and what was going on this is going to be a great classic rpg to sink your teeth into with great turn-based combat great story characters items weapons towns all of that it's all in this game remember september 27th 39 dollars 99 cents now next up is sword art online altization lycoris and i might have pronounced that wrong i'm terribly sorry if i have but this is a port from the playstation 4 xbox one version it's finally coming over to nintendo switch i think a couple years later now and i remember covering this game i think shortly after like sort of online fatal bullet came out or, or one of those sort of online games and this game's coming out september 30th for 49 dollars 99 and it's not as highly praised as some of the other sort of online games now these games don't ever get really crazy high scores or anything like that but it does have the fan base so if you're into the anime if you're into the series then this one might be one to check out 
on the Nintendo Switch, especially because it is a bigger style JRPG coming over from Xbox and PlayStation. So we'll see how they handle the port. But if it's based on how they handle things with Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet, I think that everything should be okay because that was actually a pretty good, pretty solid port over on the Nintendo Switch. Next up is a game that I'm extremely excited for. I already have the physical edition pre-ordered and that is Nier Automata, the end of Yora edition on October 6th for $39.99. And I'm excited for this just because I wanna see how the game runs and performs on the Switch because it has one of my favorite port studios from Nintendo Switch out there and that is Virtuos. These guys have done the Final Fantasy ports. They did a lot of great work on the Nintendo Switch. So I trust that they can do a great port here. So I'm more interested in exactly how it runs and how everything is than the game itself because I've already played it on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro and everything. And it's great on there. Like I had a great time. It's not my favorite, but it's still really good. And I think that this port, from what they've shown so far, it looks good. One of those impossible ports, right? Because before this game was announced for the Nintendo Switch, people felt that it couldn't run on the system, which is what people always say. We've never developed any type of game, but they say it can't run on there. It can't run on there. And then when it gets ported, they say, oh, well, they got it to run, but it's not going to run good or some other type of thing, right? But this one seems like it's going to be pretty solid based on the specs they already gave. They said 720p, 30 frames per second, and it looks like it holds somewhat steady in what they've shown. But we have to wait for the full game, so I'm more interested in just checking that out and getting the physical edition because I think that's going to be a collector's item later down the line. So if you're looking for a great action RPG from Platinum Games on the Nintendo Switch, if you're getting some Bayonetta fever along with Astral Chain, if you're into those style of games, then Nier Automata, the end of your edition, might be a game for you to check out on the Nintendo Switch. Next up is Mario Plus Rabbid Sparks of Hope on October 20th for $59.99. And this is another one of my most anticipated games and actually could be the best brand new game on this whole list when it's all said and done. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle was an absolute delight to play, got a great score, sold really well, over 10 million players at this point. So I think that Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope with a 100 million install base and a probably better game based on all the new additions and stuff that they've shown off. I think that this game could absolutely crush it when it comes to the first game sales just because of everything that we talked about here. The game just being a lot better and more people now knowing that Mario Plus Rabbids is a franchise that's actually high quality. So very much looking forward to Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Next up is Persona 5 Royal on October 21st. I couldn't find the price for this game so I'm guessing that Atlas is still kind of figuring out exactly where they're going to price the game at, but I'm thinking that it's going to be $39.99. That's what I'm guessing, but they might go with $49.99. Either way, Persona 5 Royal is going to be one of the most content-packed games that you have ever played on the Nintendo Switch when it comes to everything. This game has so much extra content in there and it's incredibly good. One of the best RPGs of all time, one of the best RPGs that I've ever played and I'm not exaggerating here, Persona 5 Royal is worth every single penny that anyone pays for it. I really enjoyed my time with the game on the PlayStation originally with Persona 5, then on the PlayStation 4 Pro with Persona 5 Royal. So I will be picking this up just for collectors, but I don't think I wanna go through another 100 hour plus journey in the game because I've already done that twice down at this point. But I will check it out, see how it runs, see how it looks on the Nintendo Switch because this is a game that Nintendo Switch fans have been asking for for literally years. Since Persona 5 came out, before the Switch was even out, people were asking that it should be on the platform because we knew about Shin Megami Tensei 5 that was announced in 2017. So it's finally coming out here. And I think that having portable Persona is like a dream come true for many fans out there. So I'm looking forward to seeing how everyone reacts to Persona 5 Royal on October 21st. Next up, Harvest Stella on November 4th for $59.99. This game recently got a Nintendo treehouse live event and it looked great it looked like square enix's final fantasy version of 
Rune Factory. It looked just like that, and it's definitely more my style with the style of combat that's in the game, with what they've shown off with how you farm and why you're farming and what it does and the story setup and some of the different people that you can have help you out on there. It looks like it's going to be a great double A style of game that you can put a lot of hours into that's going to have a lot of content as well. And if you're someone that maybe wants to get into like the farming sim slash action adventure RPG type of game, but not necessarily want or like what Rune Factory is doing or some of the other games that are on Switch, this game, Harvestella, could be the game that sets you into this genre. So what do you guys think about Harvestella launching on November 4th? Let me know in the comment section below. Next up is another Square Enix masterpiece, and that is Tactics Ogre Reborn on November 11th for $49.99. Square Enix is going absolutely nuts here in the second half when it comes to RPGs. I mean, multiple Square Enix games. And look, I am not complaining. Tactics Ogre Reborn, one of the best strategy RPGs out there, and it's finally coming over to modern platforms. It's been a while that I can sit here and say, yes, we've got a new or we've got something to be excited about when it comes to the Tactics Ogre franchise and Square Enix finally gave us that with Tactics Ogre Reborn. Now there has been a little bit of controversy with the style and graphics and how they decided to preserve the game or so or bring the game back, how the sprites are kind of smoothed out and not kind of have like that HD 2D style to it. But beside that, I think that the gameplay is probably the most important thing. And that's where Tactics Ogre Reborn really just shines. The gameplay is absolutely awesome. If you're into games like Fire Emblem Three Houses or Triangle Strategy, games like that, then Tactics Ogre Reborn should be right up your alley. And it's not too far from now on November 11th. Next up is a game that a lot of people are going to be buying. And that is Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet on November 18th for $59.99 and it's Pokemon with some Pokemon Legends Arceus kind of built into there but also with some other things that we've never seen in the Pokemon franchise before I like what they're doing with the open world the fact that it's a true first true open world Pokemon game is great giving you that type of freedom because Pokemon Legends Arceus was not a true open world game. It's not a true open world game, but it's open ended. And it really gave me the type of freedom that I would like to see from the Pokemon franchise going forward. And now Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is actually taking that to the next level with a true open world game that you can tackle in any order. And you can also bring in your friends and you guys can go adventuring right there in your world. Or you can go into their world and do that. It seems pretty seamless as well so it looks like we're getting some nice upgrades to the multiplayer functionality to the game structure and just to everything overall the graphics definitely look better not incredible by any means but definitely better than what we saw with pokemon sword and shield but there's definitely room for improvement when it comes to that but i'm excited about the gameplay and being able to kind of just explore in any order that i want to go in and the new pokemon are looking pretty dope there's already been quite a stir when it comes to some of the pokemon that they've revealed so far but i'm just looking forward to actually playing the game and being excited about a mainline pokemon game again because I really enjoyed Pokemon Legends Arceus. But what do you guys think about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet launching on November 18th? Planning on picking it up? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the final game here. It is Dragon Quest Treasures on December 9th. This is an interesting game because it takes place before Dragon Quest 11, where Eric is a little bit younger, but you have like these different monsters that you team up with, but you also fight yourself. So it's almost like Nino Kuni 1 in a sense, or even like Nino Kuni 2, both of them, whatever you want to say, but more like Nino Kuni 1. It reminds me of that. And I think that it's a great type of premise and the combat looks awesome and fun it's just very vibrant it looks like it's going to have a ton of content in there and square enix has this as a nintendo switch exclusive for the time being so it's going to be interesting to see exactly how this performs after the amazing dragon quest 12 i think that we have a lot more dragon quest fans now and it's going to be cool to see how this game performs after the amazing Dragon Quest 11, because Dragon Quest 11 brought so many new people into the franchise, especially on Nintendo Switch, and they're looking at, okay, well, what's next? It's not Dragon Quest 12, but it's still a Dragon Quest game with some familiar faces, with those type of monsters that they saw in Dragon Quest 11. So I think that this is gonna do really well, and people are gonna be excited for it. But 
Those are 11 big Nintendo Switch games that are coming out that you can look forward to playing on the Nintendo Switch. Are there any other games that I missed on here? Any other titles that you're looking forward to playing? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new. Click that notification bell, and we will see you for the next video. Peace.